Okay everyone, this is the companion video to my normal review of Dew Princess's Dream of Magic Sheep. This video is specifically going to be detailing my problems with the episode's ending. It had a lot of bad notes for me that I felt needed its own outlet from the usual comedy that goes along with these videos. Let's get right down to it. I made it no secret that Luna is not my favorite princess. Believe it or not, towards the beginning of Season 3, I would have proudly touted the new Lunar Republic flag. I mean, Luna's backstory is great, her powers are interesting, she's well conceived and pleasing to the eyes, and her past as Nightmare Moon was and continues to be interesting to go back to and explore. What's changed? She stopped evolving as a character. We never spent a lot of time with Luna during Season 1. She appeared in a major role in one episode each of Seasons 2, 3, 4, and 5, making this episode her fifth major appearance. In Luna Eclipse, Luna was portrayed as someone who was a man out of time, and more physical, emotional, and all around more aggressive than Celestia. And I liked that. That was pretty unique and interesting. Then Sleepless in Ponyville came along, she showed a more considerate, caring side of herself. That was also good. Then, for the next two episodes featuring her, we got nothing else. All we got was her spewing her wisdom in a very boring way, just being a sagely wise sage person. And Celestia does that a lot better. When Celestia does it, it comes across very naturally, as motherly and mentorly, like she enjoys being a parental figure to everyone. When Luna does it, it feels completely detached and disinterested, like she has no enthusiasm for her work and is going through the motions. I don't like that Luna is being treated as a mini Celestia when she has her own style and attitude. She's the princess who can become flustered, make a joke, or become confused. They shouldn't try to make her into the sage when that role suits Celestia much better. Even Luna's background appearances only existed to dump exposition and she was never allowed to contribute to the big problem solving. A lot of times, she felt like she had to be there by virtue of her role as a princess. To me, what kept Luna relevant and interesting from that point wasn't her personality, but her powers and her backstory, and while those are creative and interesting, that's not good enough for me. The only exception to this, and really the best handling of her character since Sleepless in Ponyville came from Slice of Life. She showed us something interesting there. While it wasn't much, I thought it was still good and told us plenty about her present relationship with Celestia. There are some people who will say, well, read the fan in to fill in the gaps. Ignoring that I shouldn't have to do that, I also don't enjoy the popular fan in portrayals of Luna. I mean, there are some good ones, but for the most part, her portrayals, like Celestia's, aren't very flattering. You see, the internet has this penchant for romanticizing misery. And boy oh boy, does Luna come with some implications of heavy misery. I mean, we see pages upon pages of fanfiction dedicated to the potential of Luna's regret or Luna's loneliness. You know, stuff that was never really explored much in the show. Unfortunately, a lot of fanfiction falls into extremes, and it's usually handled with the grace of a drunk elephant. Either Luna's a total miserable crybaby, or she exists to be an OC's love interest who needs a hero who will finally appreciate her, or just a gamer. She's just a gamer. I, I don't get it. Is it a joke? How did they come to that conclusion? And even better, what's the point? Is this memes? But in spite of all this, Luna is still one of the most beloved and popular characters of the show. I think a lot of Luna's popularity came from her early absence. Fans envisioned a personality based on the minor information we have and in time dialed those traits up to 11. I mean, it's not the only time bronies have done that, and because she was a princess character with an established backstory, people naturally wanted to flock to her. Also, statistically, people are drawn to darker and edgier characters, so maybe that's something. Anyways, when Dew Princess's Dream of Magic Sheep came around, I was hoping we would see another facet of her character. Well, as they say, be careful what you wish for. I suppose my biggest problem with this episode's ending that all of my future complaints will stem from is that Luna intentionally created the Tantibus. Luna, on purpose, created the spirit that tortured her every night. I don't think that was the best way to go. If it were an occupational hazard of the job of dream protecting, or if it spawned out of her guilt because magic, I think it would have worked a lot better. To me, if it wasn't directly Luna's fault that the Tantibus was able to do what it did, we could still have the moral of learning how to forgive yourself and let go of guilt without this gross undercurrent of pointless self-harm. I also find the fact that Luna has harbored this level of guilt for this long absolutely jarring. To me, it already felt like she was atoning for her actions with her Dreamscape episodes. The most of a hint we got that Luna felt any sort of guilt at all was in Luna Eclipse, sitting below the statue of Nightmare Moon and moping for a few seconds. 
As an aside, I like that moment, it was nice and subtle. But from then on, we didn't get any more indications that Luna felt any more hard guilt about what she did. From what For Whom the Sweetie Belle Toils showed us, I got the feeling she got over it. In fact, Celestia seemed more like the character that felt the most guilt over the whole situation. If we got this episode earlier in the show's runtime, I would be three times as forgiving, but having it this far into the show doesn't paint Luna in a positive light. Unless this was trying to accurately portray depression rather than guilt, which does make a lot more sense. Depression is sneaky because people are very good at hiding it. A lot of times depression is masked by upbeat personalities. I'm no doctor, but Luna does seem to be exhibiting several common signs of depression. But if this episode did choose to focus on depression rather than guilt, then that makes this episode look worse. The thing is, when a person suffers from depression, Bottom line, they need to see a professional, a pastor, a therapist, a chaplain, a psychiatrist, someone who is qualified for this. Friends are great for help, but in the end you need to speak to someone whose job it is to deal with this kind of situation. Another problem this episode has is it implies that this sort of self-destructive behavior is just in Luna's nature. I don't like that either because that would mean that Luna is completely untrustworthy with her vast power. Seriously, Luna is so dangerous that her mood swings could doom all of Equestria, potentially worse than what happened happened when she became Nightmare Moon. Usually with depression or by extension self-harm, the only person in immediate danger is the one with depression. Not the case here. This is in fact the second time that Luna's emotional problems have resulted in all of Equestria being at risk. I wouldn't be surprised if the populace started lobbying and petitioning the government to remove Luna from power. Would you want a ruler whose emotional instability could potentially doom you and your loved ones? I don't see Luna's actions here as strong or admirable. I see them as childish and petulant at best, and dangerous and irresponsible at worst. I didn't see Luna as trying to better herself to avert a future catastrophe. I saw Luna as punishing herself because she wanted to selfishly wallow in her guilt like some sort of emotional masochist. Even the point where Luna forgives herself was way too rushed for me to buy it and feel that she learned her lesson. Think about it. Luna harbored feelings of guilt so powerful that it compelled her to create a spirit to torture herself every night and all it takes is a short paragraph on Twilight to make it go away? I don't buy it. I realize they had 22 minutes to finish the plot, but this quick glancing over of a serious problem makes it feel like it's not being treated with the care it should be. It's almost being treated with the vapidity of a personality quirk, which is not only disrespectful, but also a potentially dangerous message to send to your audience. I don't mind the concept that Luna might have a guilt relapse and that how she truly feels about the incident actually gets addressed. After all, there are no bad ideas, only bad executions. I thought this was a bad execution. Luna claims her motivation is to make sure that she never forgave herself for how much Equestria suffered under Nightmare Moon. Okay, really? How badly did Equestria suffer under Nightmare Moon? The fight with her a thousand years ago barely lasted five minutes, and the adventure from the first episode lasted less than a day, and even then, the worst thing that happened was it was a little dark for a few hours. We are given no canon information that anyone suffered at all, and Luna is punishing herself this harshly? Sheesh, everyone tells me I'm too hard on myself. No one died or was impoverished. If you think about it, the only person who we know that has directly and or indirectly suffered from Luna's actions is Celestia, which makes it that much worse when you consider how dead set the episode was in excluding Celestia from the plot. Look, I understand that this was supposed to be Luna's episode, but Celestia had to be suffering from guilt too. It was even mentioned in Princess Twilight Sparkle Part 1. Celestia has flaws and hangups and gets sad just like everyone else. Celestia would have been there for Luna, regardless of the fact that dreams are not her domain. This series has only had two instances of Celestia and Luna being sisterly. One when Luna returned, and the previously mentioned comedic bit from Slice of Life. This episode would have been a great opportunity to flesh out the bond between them. Why didn't they include Celestia. She was certainly more qualified and experienced than the main six to hunt down rogue magic after all. Wouldn't it have been twice as meaningful to have Celestia there to help Luna get through her feelings of guilt? I mean, wouldn't Luna's own sister, the one she slighted the most and tried to kill, hold the most sway when it comes to Luna forgiving herself? Are we just going to completely forget that Celestia was the one who really suffered the most from Luna's actions? Here's how I think this episode would have worked better. The main six are about to go into the dreamscape, when suddenly, Spike is the one who mentions to have Celestia help with the situation, because 
you know, Celestia is the ruler of a sovereign nation, and it's her job to protect said nation from any and all serious threats. Anyways, Luna denies it, saying that dreams are not Celestia's domain. The camera then briefly focuses on Spike giving an unsure look. While Luna and the main six are asleep looking for the Tantibus, Spike writes a letter to Celestia explaining the situation, but the audience doesn't know this until the end of the episode. Although, the audience is given a hint of this action by showing that Spike has blown parchment away with his dragon fire just as the main six wake up. Yeah, double whammy, getting development for both Spike and Celestia. Fast forward to the Tantibus about to escape. Luna says she has been dealing with the Tantibus for a long time, but, and this is very important here, she didn't create it. It was just drawn to her immense feelings of guilt. Luna then briefly explains her decision to not tell anyone about it because she wanted to deal with it herself as a self-imposed penance for her actions. Celestia comes into the plot right at this point. The Tantibus is about to escape into the real world, but it's getting pushed back by Celestia on the other side, which also clears up the plot hole of the Tantibus taking its sweet time leaving. Now, this would be the opportunity for Luna and Celestia to have their heart to heart. First, Luna apologizes profusely for Nightmare Moon. Celestia then says how she feels guilt over the debacle as well, like if there was something she could have done to prevent it, and she affirms that she forgave Luna a long time ago. Then, Twilight says her paragraph about Luna being a changed pony and trusting everyone's forgiveness of her. See, I'm not mad at this episode as a concept, as I do like a lot of the ideas it attempts. I can understand Luna wanting to have a reminder to not go down the dark path again. After all, people keep scars all the time as a reminder to not do something stupid. But the extreme Luna resorted to makes it really hard for me to sympathize with her. This isn't keeping a scar, this is making sure the wound doesn't stop bleeding. And that kind of person is a serious danger to themselves and needs the help of a specialist, like a chaplain or a psychiatrist. You want to see a good example of handling guilt? Friggin' Kingdom Hearts, the masters of over-romanticizing everything, handled guilt over giving into darkness much better. I had given in to the darkness. How am I gonna face everyone? Like this? <laughs> you know why that was good? Let me explain. Even though it was short, it addressed that Riku felt guilty and didn't feel deserving of happiness. Sora, whom Riku slighted the most, shows that he doesn't care and has already forgiven Riku through his display of humor. It addressed the guilt, didn't say that Riku was immediately over it because guilt doesn't go away that quickly, and you get the feeling that everything's going to be alright. It's going to take some work and it's not getting fixed easily, but it's implied that Riku will forgive himself eventually. I've spoken with a couple people who have tried to reassure me that Luna tortured herself because she doesn't want to bother anyone else with her problems. Alright, I can relate to that sort of feeling. I've spoken at length about me wanting to deal with things myself and that ends up with consequences. But this… this was not that. This was a rushed and poorly handled depiction of unnecessarily extreme self-harm that resulted in character assassination and the fact that it is being glorified as good writing and good characterization really upsets me. <sighs> you know, maybe I'm just being too harsh. I know what the point of this episode was and what the message was intended to be. I mean, showing kids how to let go of guilt is a great idea. I will give this ending some credit. This is going to sound negative, but I mean it positively. Luna not telling anyone about the Tantivist like her sister means she still hasn't taken everything from the Nightmare Moon incident to heart. Back then, she let a darkness fester within her, didn't talk to anyone about it like her sister, and the darkness eventually became a huge problem to everyone around her. Here, she almost made the exact same mistake, which is a clever dose of irony considering the lengths Luna went to try and prevent it from happening again. After all, Luna isn't a perfect character, and showing her to make mistakes like that is actually good for her development. And from what I've seen, a lot of people seem to be mixed about this episode in a way that kind of reminds me of the reaction to Man of Steel. People are completely split down the middle. Half the fandom thinks Do Princess's Dream of Magic Sheep is a great analysis and closure of Luna's character and guilt. The other half thinks it's insulting to both them and Luna's character. Each side has a reasonable stance, but it's a stance that the other side just can't see no matter how they look at it. Honestly, I really struggled with this episode. For a while, I thought I was misinterpreting things and being a Debbie Downer, but I still felt compelled to write this video. As I wrote it and got feedback on the script, I started to see the point of view of the other side more. I don't agree with it, but I understand it better. Here's how I'm choosing to look at the situation. A lot of people received the message the way it was intended, and I should probably be happy about that. I suppose if people are liking it because they saw a guilt-ridden character finally forgive herself and triumph over her in a darkness, Maybe I shouldn't be taking this too seriously. 